Hey guys, thanks for joining Learn to Play. My name is Lance, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a game called Army Moles. It's a two to four player competitive tactical strategy war game, and it takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play. In it, each player is going to control two tanks that they're going to maneuver throughout the battlefield to control objectives, capture flags, or destroy their opponents, depending upon the mission that you're playing. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. All right, so for as far as player setup goes, each player will choose a color to be to represent them, and then they will get their base hex flag, their two tank driving tokens, their control tokens, active tank token, their two tank models, and then each player will be randomly dealt three characters, Out of these characters, the players will choose one of them to be their commander, which will be based off of their commander skill that they wish to have for their for their game. Now the commander skill can be used once per turn, and as you can see, some of the commander skills have a cost in acorns that you'll have to spend to activate that particular skill. Now the other two characters will be their drivers of the tank, so they'll go ahead and take these tokens and place them on those characters to represent the tank that they're driving. As far as those characters go, they have their health, the range that they can make attacks with, and their basic movement value. And then each driver will have a special driver skill that he can use once per game. Alright, so as far as the board setup, you have to choose which side of the board you're going to use. The one side has all the train and stuff pre-generated that you'll fill in with your tokens. The other side is blank and lets you create your own. So let's go ahead and go with the pre-generated side. So once we have that, then we're gonna go ahead and fill in all the spots with terrain. All right, and then the last thing we have to fill in is our strategic objectives, which are the various sites that it will put our uh, strategic objective tokens on. So, for each objective, we place, like, so for the tractor, we'll place it, the strategic objective over it, and then it has an arrow that points to the area that is uh, for it to control. So when a tank goes into this area then and stops their turn, then they can go ahead and place one of their control flags there and gain control over that objective. Each one of the objectives has one control point, except for the middle objective, which is the windmill. That one has two. So with that one, if only one tank has control over it, then they will have a control. If there's two different control flags on it, then neither tank will control it. All right, so a little bit more about the terrain. So each feature of terrain, whether it's the woods, the mountains, or strategic zones, all block line of sight, and all of them are impassable pieces of terrain, so you cannot move past them with your tanks. The other thing is you have a river that runs through the center of the map and that is going to be difficult terrain for your tank so it'll have, they'll have to spend an additional movement point to move onto those areas. Alright, so once we're done with this, then we're going to go ahead and look into the manual and choose one of the play modes that all the players agree to play. And then the players are going to go ahead and set up their tanks and things, so each player will choose one of the starting flags to be their starting zone, and we'll go ahead and place their control flag out on that zone. And then the players are going to go ahead and lay out all their stuff. So for each player, they will go ahead and place a tank in one of the highlighted areas, and they can face the tank in any direction, but it has to be facing one of the six hex sides. It cannot be split between the two like that. It has to be facing a flat wall of the hex that it's on. All right, so we're almost done with setup. So now that all the players are set up, another thing we're gonna go ahead and do is grab the mission cards, shuffle them up, and deal out three to be the starting three mission cards for that for this particular game. And each one of those mission cards will have a specific thing that needs to be accomplished in order to gain the victory points that are listed on that card. From there, then we're gonna go ahead and for each player, we're going to go ahead and grab skill cards 
that are, have that particular character's facing on it. So there'll be two cards for each character. So we'll go ahead and grab those and then we shuffle those into the action card deck. So you're gonna have a pretty substantial size deck when you're done. Once that's done, then you're gonna go ahead and deal out one card to each player for their starting card. And these cards can do different things. They'll give special abilities to tanks or make uh, certain things. And each one has a condition that it'll tell you when you can use it. And if it has a cost in acorns to go along with it. Once that's done, then we're ready to start the first player's turn. And you can determine the first player in any way that you want to. You can roll the dice for a certain number of dice or however you want to decide who goes first. You can do that. All right, so I've gone ahead and chosen the green player to be the first player in this game. So during the player's turn, they'll choose one of their tanks to be their active tank during the first turn of the game, since neither one is gone yet. So we'll go ahead and select the claw, and we'll go ahead and put the active tank token on that, on that tank. Now in subsequent turns, that token will alternate from tank to tank, and you'll never be able to activate the same tank twice or two, two turns in a row. So our next turn, the Pew Pew will go. Another thing to keep in mind, in subsequent player turns, the first thing you'll do is alternate that token to the opposite tank. You'll remove any armor tokens that you've placed on your active tank from the previous turn. You'll end all effects that affected that tank during that previous turn. And then you can choose to play any skill cards that you have that you wish to play on your new active tank. And then the enemies can do the same. And then once that is all done, then we can go ahead and move into the dice. All right, so as far as the dice go, there are five different facings on the dice. You have two ones and a two, which can be used for both uh, giving your tank more movement points or extending the range of its shots. You have the turn symbol which will let you rotate your tank to face in any direction or to rotate its turret to face in any direction. You have the shot dice which will allow you to make attacks against enemy tanks that you have range to and line of sight to. And then you have the acorn which will allow you to trade in uh, those uh, dice for acorns that you can use to pay costs on your action cards or your player's skills or abilities. Now, during a player's turn, once all those other things have been done that we've already talked about, then they're going to go ahead and grab the six dice and go ahead and give them a roll. They can choose to keep any of these dice that they like, and then they can re-roll any dice that they choose up to two additional times. So let's go ahead and keep the two. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you roll uh, multiples of the same symbol, you can also use, trade those in for action cards when it comes time to trade in your dice. You don't have to, you can use those as the uh, skills that come up, but you can choose two if you want. Let's also go ahead and hold on to the two acorns and the swivel, and we'll go ahead and re-roll these. And let's go ahead and roll them one more time. All right. So from here, we're going to go ahead and I will show you how those work. All right, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is trade in our two acorn dice for two acorns. So we'll go ahead and grab two acorns and we'll go ahead and place those on our commander. From there, then we're going to go ahead and use uh, our movement. We get our basic movement for our tank. So we're using the claw, so his basic movement is three spaces. So you can move three spaces and then we can add additional range if we need to. So for regular movement of a tank, it can move from hex to hex for one point and it can turn 60 degrees for one point. Or like I said, if you use the swivel, you can face it in any direction you choose. Now in order for a tank to move backwards, you would have to spend two points. So let's go ahead and work our way towards uh, this objective so that we can control it. So we're gonna go ahead and move one space forward and then we're gonna use one of our points to swivel our tank 60 degrees. And then our last basic movement point will be to move forward. From there, we're going to go ahead and spend two or a dice to get two additional movement points. So that'll let us turn one and move forward one. And we're going to go ahead and use another dice to do another move and a swivel. 
and then we'll use our last movement dice to move on to this space and we don't really have anything to do with that last movement point so it'll be wasted and then we can swivel our tank to face in any direction we choose so let's go ahead and pivot it this way and then we're all done with our dice so at this point our player turn would be over all right so now we're going to go ahead and talk about the end of the player turn so now since we're all done with our movement we can go ahead and place one of our control flags underneath our tank to represent that we've controlled that location from there we can also spend any of our action cards to purchase armor for our active tank if we feel like it's going to be shot at now one thing to keep in mind with armor is that it's only good for the front facing of the tank so you have to be mindful of which way your tanks facing otherwise you, the armor is useless once we're done with that then we can go ahead and discard down to five action cards if we happen to have more than five action cards if we have any poison tokens on our tank then we have to take a damage for each poison token we have or we can spend two acorns to remove the poison tokens which we don't have any right now so we're okay there and then if we have eight or more acorns with our commander then he goes nuts and he'll do two damage to the active tank uh, and he'll lose half of his acorns so you want to be mindful about how many acorns you can control and use those before you go over and then from there then we'll move to the next player which will be the blue player all right so we've gone ahead and jumped ahead a couple of turns so that i can show you guys how shooting works so it is currently the blue player's turn and his active tank is going to be pew pew so we'll go ahead and change our token over to that and then we've have we don't want to play any cards and nobody else has played any cards on us so this is our final roll of dice so we can go ahead and resolve that so the first thing we're going to do is use our basic movement of three spaces so we'll move them up one and two from here we're going to go ahead and take some shots so we have our range on our active tank is two and in order to determine if we have line of sights to another tank we'll draw a little imaginary line from the center point of our space to the center point of the enemy space if that point crosses any type of impassable terrain then that shot is blocked but we do have an open shot to the other player's tank and our range on our guy is two spaces so right now we don't have range so we're going to go ahead and use one of our range dice or one of our dice with numbers to add range so now we have a range of four spaces and then we're going to go ahead and spend our shot dice to go ahead and do three damage to the enemy tank and uh, with his tank he's already taken six damage so and his health is nine so he will actually be killed so that tank will be removed from play and we will go ahead and get a victory point for defeating that tank so we'll go ahead and place a victory point token on our character and that'll use up all those dice so then we still have these two dice left so we're going to go ahead and rotate our tank to face a different direction and then we're going to go ahead and move two spaces so that we can protect our tank and on our player turn is over All right, so the next thing I'd like to go over real quick is when a tank is destroyed, like we saw in the previous turn, we will go ahead and place that tank back out in one of the starting player's uh, beginning hexes, and he can face in any direction. And then when it comes time for that tank to activate during that player's turn, that tank can move and do all of its normal uh, things during its turn. The only thing it cannot do is shoot at other tanks for one turn after that it's during its subsequent activations then it can go ahead and shoot freely again as in any other turn all right so the last thing we're going to cover is victory conditions so depending upon the mode you're playing that might alter things but the general rule is the first player to seven victory points will be the winner of this game so you can alter that by changing those conditions or adding operations or playing different modes and that pretty much does it 
So please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any suggestions or feedback, I always am appreciative of that. And if you enjoy this video, please think about subscribing and liking the video. Thanks.